for the warm welcome. Uh, you know, as a Harvard Business School graduate, this isn't exactly how I went to class when I was there, but um, I am honored to be here at ISB. Um, I, uh, yesterday I had the honor of standing uh, on the stage with your Prime Minister talking about uh, a new relationship between the United States and India. Uh, I am excited about our strategic partnership. Uh, I'm equally excited about the future of India. It is in the interest of the United States to be friends with India. It's in the interest of the United States to, to work for free and fair trade with India. It's in the interest of the United States that an entrepreneurial class uh, grow in this great country. It's in the interest of India that an entrepreneurial class grow in this great country so that people can realize dreams and find good jobs. Uh, you know, I, I, I said something really interesting. I thought interesting, otherwise I wouldn't have said it the other day. Uh, in a speech I gave in Washington, there are the, the middle class of India is 300 million people large. That's larger than the entire United States. And when America looks at India, America ought to look at India as a strategic partner in keeping the peace, a great democracy which is capable of, of having people from different religions live side by side in, in peace and harmony and a wonderful opportunity to, uh, with whom to trade. One of the things that you can uh, judge a country by is the uh, vitality of the youth. And uh, one of the reasons I really wanted to come to ISB was because I understand it's a center of excellence in education. It's a, it's a, a new school that is using uh, innovative techniques to give people the tools necessary to succeed. Yesterday I met with some uh, Indian CEOs and American CEOs, kind of the, the old folks. Today I'm meeting with the CEOs of tomorrow, uh, the people that are going to help drive this great engine of economic prosperity for India, for the good of the world, is how I view it. And so thanks for letting me and the ambassador come. Ambassador, thanks for setting this up. I want to thank uh, uh, Chairman Gupta. Who, uh, fellow Harvard Business School graduate who helped form this school. And I want to thank the dean of the school as well as the professors and faculty for being here as well. And the rest of the students, thanks for letting me come by to say hello. I think it'd be interesting uh, for you to tell me what's on your mind or ask me questions. And the whole purpose of which is to help kind of foster this uh, partnership that is developing on the political level so that people in my own country can see that there's uh, folks just like themselves here in India working to realize dreams and, and uh, create opportunities. So whoever would like to begin, we can start. And uh, if not, I'm just going to call on somebody like you. <laughs> so I'll, I guess, do the honors. Thank you for being here. I didn't graduate from ISB, but it um, seems like a great place. I graduated from Carnegie Mellon. Uh, in Pittsburgh. That's so. also a good place. <laughs> I, I will tell you something. She's really smart to go there. Thank you. You don't go there unless you're smart. <laughs> Anyways, so I'm from the IT industry, so let me ask a question relating to that. Uh, not just IT, I guess, um, the generally outsourcing. So uh, India and China have um, experienced a lot of growth because of uh, globalization and outsourcing in general, I IT outsourcing in particular. And um, I live in the U.S., so I know that there is a lot of resistance um, in, the, in the media and also in the industry about outsourcing. But as entrepreneurs and as people who believe in um, capitalism, we uh, feel that there's no other um, way to go but capitalism and, and globalization and outsourcing, etc. Yeah. So um, does the government or um, does it have a political strategy on, you know, how to manage sure. the, do a balancing act? No, I appreciate it. First of all, what do you do? I have a IT consulting company. Okay. Uh, one of the, the, the future of any country is to make sure uh, women have got opportunity. And so I congratulate you for being a CEO. Thank you. By the way, I've got a strong woman travel with me and the Secretary of State. <laughs> I'm not trying to avoid your question, by the way. Uh, um, people do lose jobs as a result of globalization. 
and uh, and it's painful for those who lose jobs. But the fundamental question is how does a, a government or society react to that? And there's basically one of two ways. One is to say losing jobs is painful, therefore let's throw up protectionist walls. And the other is to say uh, losing jobs is painful, so let's make sure people are educated so they can find the, fill the jobs of the 21st century. And let's make sure that there's pro-growth economic policies in place. Now, what does that mean? That means low taxes. It means less regulation. It means fewer lawsuits. It means wise energy policy. So I've taken the position. And I've taken it as recently as my State of the Union, where I said the United States of America will reject protectionism. We won't fear competition. We welcome competition. But we won't fear the future either because we intend to shape it through good policies. And that's how you deal with in a global economy. You don't, you don't, you don't retrench and pull back. You welcome competition and you understand globalization uh, is provides great opportunities and the classic opportunity for our American farmers and entrepreneurs and small businesses to understand there's a 300 million person market of middle class citizens here in India and that if we can make a product they want then it becomes viable at a, at a reasonable price and then all of a sudden people will be able to have a market here and so people and people in America should uh, I hope uh, it, uh, you know maintain their confidence about the future thanks for the question Good luck to you. Uh, yes, ma'am. My name is Anjali. Um, I actually went to Wellesley College, and I'm actually a student at the ISB. Uh, Let me say something before you ask the question. One of the most important things for America is to make sure our universities and colleges are accessible to Indian students. And uh, because I find it really interesting, the first two questioners have gone to school in the United States. There can be sometimes perceptions about our country that simply aren't the truth but nevertheless become stuck in people's minds. And one way to defeat those perceptions is to welcome people to the United States so you can see firsthand, you know, our good side and our bad side. And you can draw your own conclusions without being told what to think. Sorry to interrupt. No problem. Um, this is actually related to the point you just made about the, the market with the 300 million people. I actually uh, run the um, nonprofit club and social enterprise club here at the ISB. Uh, in, uh, with a lot of help from the faculty, from the Center of Entrepreneurship, and the student body. And we're a fairly active group who, are very, who believe in what we call compassionate capitalism through providing for venture capital funding for these small businesses and social entrepreneurs so that they can innovate and actually self-sustain themselves by providing affordable goods and using a market-based model rather than the traditional aid-based model. Yeah. So my question to you, Mr. President, is what do you feel and how do you feel that your government will support India in this sort of bilateral um, sort of partnership whereby your investors can get a financial return as well as create social impact in a developing country such as India? Well, there's two types of investments. One is private capital, which uh, goes to places where people think they can get a reasonable turn, reasonable return relative to risk. And government can help uh, assuage uh, some concerns about risk by having transparency in policy, you know, consistent law. Uh, you know, one of the things you don't want to do is invest in a country and then all of a sudden laws change. Or transparency into why people make decisions. Or, you know, less bureaucratic hurdles in order to, to invest. You know, people look around at places to invest. In my country, for example, there's competition between the states. And uh, if they see there's uh, a lot of bureaucratic hurdles to, uh, to, to you have to uh, get over in, in order to invest in one state versus another, they, you know, they, they, people tend to mitigate risk in order to maximize return. There's, there's also public investment. And through USAID and other aspects of our State Department, we do uh, provide microfinancing. You know, small loans to entrepreneurs. Today, I went over to the Agricultural Center and uh, saw some of the benefits of not only good agricultural research, uh, but, uh, but the concept of uh, microloans to encourage entrepreneurship, particularly amongst women in, uh, in rural India. And it's an effective program. And microloans have worked 
around the world. And so one of the things we do through our State Department, ably led by Secretary Rice, I want you to know, is, uh, is to encourage microloan financing. Yes, sir. My company is based in the U.S., and we deal mostly electronic components exports to India. My question is, after this nuclear deal, do you think the same thing will come in electronics field? Like, we have a lot of sanctions, export restrictions on shipping yeah. components to India, uh, where the same product they can buy, at, they, buy the, uh, they pay more, but they get it from Europe, where there's no export restrictions. We're constantly reviewing what's called the export control list.